find our purpose as we simply want to enhance community health and well-being and to nurture, support, grow and promote the local organic food economy in whatever form that takes. Um, and so we can do anything necessary to achieve that purpose and um, it keeps on um, evolving as we go. Firstly, um, w organic, why bother with organic? What, what is it? Um, for us, we simply define it as food that's uh, safe to eat, nutritious, particularly important, of course, for health, and also good for the earth. So it's good for us and good for the earth. And most of what we sell in Brown Owl is certified organic with standards applied. So there's four different certifications in New Zealand, and we try and source food from these. But we're not um, entirely purist. We also source from the local area. Um, we like to support local growers and people who are um, using organic principles but aren't certified. Why? Why bother? Um, what is organic? Uh, what does it mean to us? Well, there's so many different reasons why we would want to source organic food. Um, I'll go through some of them. Taste, quality, human and animal health reasons, um, health of Papatuanuku, the land, the biodiversity, the soil and the water. And of course, atmosphere, the climate. Um, so it's an ethical choice in eating. It's uh, something that we choose because we care more, we care about our own body and our own connection with everything that's around us. Um, so it tastes better, that's what our members say. We have um, quite a few members who order because it's fresh and delicious. And you know, it's often coming from a short distance, so it's a lot better in terms of taste. I'm not sure which way to point this. Um, cancer prevention. So m a lot of our members are, are joining our club because they are, they've been touched by cancer in some way. Someone in their family themselves or, um, or someone that they know is facing the journey, the cancer journey. And it's, it's a disease that's killing more, others, uh, more, more people in New Zealand than any other at the moment. Um, so it's a major reason for choosing organic food. Most of what is grown today is treated with pesticides. That's not so healthy for the environment, but does it really affect us? Meet the Palmberg family. They don't eat organic food. It costs me a money box. It is still quite a lot of money for me. But for the next two weeks, the Palmbergs are going to eat only organic. Before they begin, urine samples are taken from each of the family members. And it turns out they have a number of different pesticides inside their bodies. Vi hittade framförallt insektsmedel, svampmedel och stråförkortningsmedel. Det äter insektsmedel. Ja, äckligt. Ja. Så, allting i kitchen är replaced och de börjar bara äta only organic. Then, another round of samples are taken and now, almost all the pesticides have disappeared. Vi vet ju väldigt lite om långtidseffekter av att äta mat som har besprutats. Speciellt med tanke på att studier har visat att kemikalier i kombination kan vara långt farligare än kemikalier var och en för sig. När man får höra det här så tänker man framförallt på barnen. Det är många kemikalier som har lämnat deras kroppar och jag vill inte ha tillbaka dem i mina barn. So that's a, a film from Sweden, but it just slow, it just puts it really nicely. If you eat organic within two weeks, the effects can be noticed in your body fluids. And um, at Brown Owl, we just think organic food shouldn't be just for a select few. We want it to be available for everyone. We, we want people to see it as the norm because it's the way that food used to be grown um, before this um, crazy chemical industrial agricultural revolution. <coughs> so. Organic means less toxicity. Um, I don't know if you knew Roundup, for example, is now considered a probable carcinogen and it's used all the way through our wheat. Most loaves of bread you buy in New Zealand are gonna have it in it because the wheat comes from Australia and it's sprayed. Um, organic means lower nitrogen pollution. So we, we farm uh, naturally, we put natural fertilizers on the soil and so less runoff down into the water table. Also lower carbon emissions. Um, lots of research has shown that if you build up the soil organic matter, 
you're not uh, you're actually sequestering carbon and you're not um, releasing so much carbon into the atmosphere. <coughs> Likewise, often less machinery involved. It's also better for the bees because there's no bee toxic chemicals, which was really important um, aspect for agriculture. And just generally better for biodiversity because organic farms are generally more biodiverse. They have more things going on. <coughs> so I'm going to hand it over to Janine now because what you're really interested in is to find out how we started and how, how we progressed and got to where we are now. So Janine's the founder. I'll let her take over. You asked me six years ago, um, would I be standing talking? And I would probably have said yes because I had something in my head that wouldn't go away. I couldn't stop it. And it has been a roller coaster journey, but um, I am now supported by an amazing group of people and members, two, over 200 members, who are all like minded and all share the love and food. So, uh, how did I start? It started from um, a two week permaculture course held at my property. Uh, nearly caused a divorce, but we got through that. Um, and the tutors there said, you don't need all of that, you just can do it here. And they said, come and have a look at what my daughter's doing in Taupo. And so I went down and looked at what um, her co-op was um, operating like. I loved it and I thought, I want to work from home. I want to change Rotorua, um, seeing it as a organic desert, good food desert and I thought I want to bring good food in. So all I started with um, was a little area in my um, garage and I had probably six people that I went to and said would you be interested and they said yes. Um, there was a local co-op uh, that was operating and they moved away so it, um, yeah, it sort of gave me more um, energy to go, okay, this is me now. Um, so I started with a good friend who shared, um, you know, the, the love for organic food and then um, just started buying things in. I did it from the seat of my pants. I had no systems. All I had was a vision in my head and it went from there. And I heard a lot of people coming back to me saying, oh, we had a co-op 10 years ago and the person running it got tired and it all fell apart and it will happen to you and ra di ra di ra. Um, but I didn't even listen because I knew that this is what I wanted um, for myself and my family and um, for other people who desperately needed it. And um, I believed in self-reliance. I didn't like supermarkets. There was always a bit of me that was a bit of a rebel uh, who went against the grain um, with my children, with education, with birthing, with growing food and so this was a bit of a um, stirring the pot. And uh, it felt good because there was a lot of people that jumped on board and from six members we jumped probably to 12 and then I thought oh let's get to 20, got to 20. Um, I thought oh this is great let's get you know and I just kept having these figures in my head. Um, we started with, uh, I, I bought equipment um, from my own money um, as it allowed uh, and people used to come and say look I've got this, would you like this and so it just it just evolved and I always believed that anything good has to work. I had no ego, um, I didn't want to control all of the members, no egos, they just wanted to help. Uh, I, um, I had a passion and I had a love and so that's where good things happen. And you have good people, you have a lot of love, you have a passion, and it can't fail. I didn't want to rely on any outside money. I didn't, um, funding wasn't, didn't even come into the equation. But it's really, really interesting. If there's a good thing, then things will come. And um, 
I got a lot of inspiration um, from books. Um, Nelson Mandela, beautiful book, um, Zilch, How to Get More for Less in Business, uh, A Life in the Gorge River. He was exceptional, how he just lived his life as he thought so. The Promise of a Pencil, this guy, he had no funding, no help, but he had a passion for um, creating schools all over the world. And of course, my permaculture Bible. So from the home, oh, yep. From the home, um, we had a really good system. People would shop on a, um, no, I shouldn't say shop. People would come on a Wednesday, um, collect the goods that they had ordered. I would email it out manually every week and um, every week I would have a story about what had happened in their life, which would gather the people. And so that was rolling really well until one day I opened the letterbox and there was a letter from the council saying you cannot operate this way. So that turned everything upside down. Um, it caused a lot of stress for me and for my members, but it brought us together because we would not let Brownell disappear. The council would not, um, we had so much love for Brownell, uh, they would not disband us. So we, I, we had meeting after meeting after meeting, we got a lot of people on board, but at the end of the day, they just said, we, yeah, we couldn't, they couldn't understand our concept, which was, <coughs> In other areas of New Zealand, it was happening all over the place. But in Rotorua, unfortunately, they just couldn't, under they couldn't understand the concept of bringing food in in bulk, dispersing it to our families. So they said, we need a registered kitchen. And so we came upon uh, Linton Park Community Centre, a very small room, but we handled it for a year. Um, and then our membership grew even more. And um, we did a lot of fundraising, and the idea was the systems, because of more members, the systems needed to be tightened. I couldn't now sort of guess how many bananas we needed or how many apples we needed. There had to be systems in place. And when I would sit down and go, I can't do this because I'm a visionary, I'm not a systematic type person, who would come on board were members who enjoyed that. And they said, I'll help. So it was, it was easy. Um, so we needed a website. And how do you get money for a, a website? <coughs> I don't know. Well, a, a guy who was a member, IT specialist, came on board, built us a website and said, you can pay me off. So we, somebody suggested, give a little. So we raised $2,000 in two weeks from people, from family, from people in the community. And that kick-started our website, and we paid Chris off over a year, I think. Mm. Yep. Beautiful website. If you ever get a chance, go on our website. It's just amazing what we can do. And because we, um, Linton Park was um, becoming smaller and smaller for our operation, Jenny came upon um, our Nongataha Bowling Club, which we're in there now. They can't do enough to help us. They've been exceptional. Um, so this is where we operate from. We've got a registered kitchen, which on a Wednesdays we uh, pack all our orders, and on Tuesdays we um, bag, so we break down 25 kg sacks of things. And we have volunteers. People are doing things from the kindness of their heart. And we said, well, you can only do that for so long with a lot of people, so we're offering them discounts from their, um, uh, from their orders, so they get a 20% discount, and for those who deliver, they get $2, $4 a box. So we are giving back to our volunteers, but the energy in the room on a Wednesday is happy. Uh, people, we've never had an issue with, with people um, or our members. It's just been an abs absolute pleasure. So we have um, over oh, 210 plus members, um, web orders, 
So we have a busy week, and now, uh, which I, I think is exceptional, um, from this little group at the beginning, we are now able to um, pay our operations manager. So Diana has been working operations now for two years. She's doing everything I used to do, but in a much more systematic and, you know, it's a lot more easier for our big operation now. And so she's um, earning. And she was a mum at, um, at home with her children, and now she's earning an income. We now have uh, Kimberly, and she um, is earning too. She is helping on a, um, she's controlling the Wednesdays and the Tuesdays, and now um, she's earning. And she's a woman that can't go out and, and have a full-time job if, because of an illness. And so Brownow has given her an opportunity to be with like-minded people and also earn a bit of money to help her. Um, it is a real community. There's a lot of love um, between our volunteers. We have social gatherings and um, families are involved. It's a, real, it's a real pleasure to be a part of. And um, we source our- Shall I say something about yeah, the supply? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know if I have to pinch this off you again. I think I do. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah. Hopefully. Um, we've, we've actually got quite a big turnover now, so I'm the treasurer and I thought I, that's why I thought I'd better say something about the, the money side of things. So um, it's grown a huge, so we manage all our stock and um, invoicing and everything through zero and um, I couldn't do it without that because I'm a volunteer as well. Um, we buy lots of bulk supplies from these, from these kinds of um, wholesale suppliers. <coughs> And we also pay a whole lot of small local suppliers and we're constantly trying to extend out and get more of them. But of course that does involve time and effort in arranging those things. But we are buying lots of things from mainly tauranga, avocados, limes, lemons, garlic, pumpkins, capsicums, tomatoes, potatoes and mushrooms and more. Oh, that's a passion fruit up on the left, supplier. Um, and then locally it's very limited but one of our goals is to actually encourage this and provide a market for it. We're buying a whole lot of, as much as we can locally, um, that is produced without sprays and in an in a organically principled way, including from St Chad's Charitable Trust who grow their own herbs and dry them and they also sell um, organic fertiliser in, in bottles. So that's fantastic to be able to support them. Um, we have some small local um, egg producers who sell eggs that aren't produced with GM feed and also honey producers. And yeah, that's just our, that's our website. So members can order by placing a very precise, you know, they can basically do a la carte what they would like for the week and um, put their order in. And it's all collated at the back. Um, and it's very organised. I think that's, very that's the key. That's the, one of the keys. We've got to highlight what is what's actually helped us succeed. Well, I think getting more organised was the, one of the key things, and having the right tools. So, a good website, web support from our secretary who provides it for free. He's a he's a web designer. Uh, good accounting systems, good structure. We actually formed the Incorporated Society out of that stressful period with the council and with finding a. a a venue and wanting to be all above board so we were like well okay we need to have some proper structure here and we we had some an AGM and we you know wrote our rules and did everything very officially but it's really helped us to have that structure yeah. and that committee that has the mandate to go ahead and make decisions um, we also not we don't just deal in food of, in the supply of, of food we also help to run workshops and provide information to people as a vehicle for uh, for knowledge about healthy eating and, and um, so yeah, Janine might want to say something more about our keys to success yes. possibly from now on. <coughs> okay, you now I'll finish up after that. Oh. <laughs> oh. Can't see. Right. So um, I think the keys to success is is having a positive attitude. Um, please don't listen to anyone that comes 
and says you can't do that because where there's a will there's a way and that that really is um, the crux of it really where, the, where there's a will there's a way where there's a passion you will you will stay up till two o'clock in the morning you know because you're doing it and doing it for the for the wellness of our community the wellness for your family for yourself and at the end of the day that's what we want isn't it for good strong healthy communities and um, because when you're healthy and strong you can actually contribute to society in a real positive way so remove all those negative um, thoughts because they don't make things happen and they drag you down and those people drop away in the end they they don't need to be on your bus um, so there's no no ego and when you when you put money in, into it when you throw money when people have their hand out it doesn't work you have to do it for the love money changes a lot of things and that's why I think the strength and success of Brownell there's been no issue of money because things when I needed a fridge somebody donated a fridge um, when I needed a van a van came to me it, it was I think money does change a lot of things and funding you, 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 yes you need funding funding but it it, um, it doesn't fix things so don't give up when the vision is strong keep going um, and being organized yes it did work to start because you have to start you have to put that step in front because if you don't nothing gets done and I was that person because somebody who's too logical cannot do that because they think of well, what about this what about this what about this and nothing starts but you have somebody like me who goes oh what the heck I'll do it anyway <laughs> well then um, you know it, it, it does work and then those people come in behind you and take it on when you know well when the members became when we got to 50 members I was like oh, I can't do this anymore um, and they they came on board and organization does help in the end but to start with it doesn't <laughs> if you can it's get my just thing, yeah. no. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, stamina yes you, you need that but I think that comes when, when I thought I can't do this anymore um, a member would ring and say look I'm really ill I need to I need organic food and that brings you up again um, so um, that definitely does help and a good and a good support system but I really I, I got a lot of inspiration um, from my books from people who've done it and have succeeded in doing it um, but also I I've, I've got just to end off I think um, I want to share something with you and this was from Nelson Mandela as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So, um, and then I have been, I've been really touched by um, Rotorua. I wanted to leave oh, 15 years ago, but I wasn't allowed, so I stayed and I've been really humbled by being in this place. Um, it takes a long time for Rotorua to get going, but once it gets going, it's got a lot of depth. And my son started Rotorua Boys High School this year. I just want to share with you this because I think it, it, it does help. Um, and I got a lot of um, feelings from that. And I thought, I'm just going to Google Maori proverbs because I do get a lot of inspiration from, from them. And I, I, I'm sorry for those in the room that um, can speak Murray. I can't and I don't want to try. So I just want to give the um, English translation. Seek the treasure you value most dearly. If you bow your head, let it, let it be to a lofty mountain. And this is about aiming high or for what is, is truly valuable. To be persistent and don't let obstacles stop you from reaching your goal. And we've got a lot of goals. We've still got a lot of goals and um, 
Jenny will share those. So just to finish up for our last few minutes, um, I'm one of the coming in behind people, as you can probably tell. Yes. <laughs> um, and, and the things Janine says about money, um, yeah, I sort of semi-agree. <laughs> and on the other hand, but you've also got to have a really good budget and you've got to set your, so if you're non-profit, you have to, you have to try and make money actually, but then you just redistribute it within your area. So we've done that really well by um, our what volunteers are really well you know, compensated for their work um, with their discounts that they receive. And this week we started donating regularly to a um, kind of like a soup kitchen in our community. So we can give all our extra greens and potatoes and what have you to the Trinity Centre who are going to go and then um, give them for free to people who need them or put them in their soup or whatever. So. Um, we can only do that if we're sustainable and if we've got a financial plan that, that works, and at the moment we do. We paid very little tax last year because we, we made almost nothing, but we actually ended up doing a lot still. You know, we, we gave a lot um, back. So our vision for the future is that we want to make organic food accessible and affordable for everyone in Rotorua. Um, we want people to see organic food as the norm, just, just the normal food again, not, not some special boutique thing that some people can buy. Um, we want to change people's outlooks and we also want to stimulate the, the, the organic um, production in Rotorua so that people here are, are growing our food and we're not having to get so much of it in from Hawke's Bay or Tauranga or anywhere else. Um, so the community supports the agriculture. And we want to make it accessible to people who, haven't, who wouldn't normally have got it before. Um, and we want to be resilient, so organics is all about being resilient. So in terms of specific uh, oh, future challenges, yeah, there's always challenges keeping up with our growth. We haven't had a problem with marketing. We've had a problem with growth, uh, managing our growth um, and our governance. And, and you know, um, do we go the route of contractors or employed staff or how we manage all our logistics? But, you know, um, challenges will always be there. But um, as Janine says, you've just got to keep your vision strong and be aware of what might be coming, but just go ahead and do it anyway. Um, so we want more of our members to be growing for us and we're trying to encourage that. Um, we obviously have a committee vets all the, you know, people can't, not, not anyone can sell food to us because we don't accept certain methods of production so we have to get up to speed a little bit more with um, checking and um, applying that, that rigour to the um, process of buying the food from, so we actually have to go to people's places and check them out and make sure that they're following organic principles, otherwise we can't buy the food because that's what we stand for. But we are actually doing that to a certain extent, but we want more of that to happen and to buy local. We also want to, I mean, everything we've developed, we could share it with other people because we are open source, so we want if someone else wanted to take our system and replicate it somewhere else, then they could just contact us and we'd be happy to share. Um, and then we have these wild ideas sometimes of actually having our own center, but I think it's good to have an, a, a vision. So it could be all sorts of things all together and we might even join in with other organizations to do this. So we'd have an organic shop, which was non-profit, cafe, workshop space, teaching people how to cook, um, you know, even a live music space, joined to a garden, um, somewhere where we could run our operations in the back room, place for whānau, place for yoga, you know, this, it, doesn't, it doesn't hurt to throw your vision out there and um, then you have a general direction that you can move in. Um, so I went to Austria last year and I, I came across one of these sorts of places which was in a town that was only 14,000 people or something lived there and they already had an amazing organic shop, cafe, teaching space, local co-op thing going on and I thought, wow, we could do that. <clears throat> or maybe we might even um, go for a mobile organic shop. This is another, another vision if that could be a step on the way. Um, yeah, We are going to have a stall at the local farmers market um, coming up soon because the council has started one. Um, so that's, that's another step on the way. <clears throat> so just ending our talk this morning, to, got to say thanks to everyone who's helped us out there. Um, especially Nongataha Bowling Club, I think, deserves a special mention because that's our home. All our members and volunteers and our, the rest of our committee, we've got a committee of nine, 
the moment. Um, and to the places where we deliver our boxes and drop them off, our pickup points. And of course, um, people who've supported us to get our organisation where it's come to, in particular, Janine's husband, <laughs> Mike Cox, of Metal Form Engineering, spent years driving things around in trucks for Brown <laughs> And the Rotorua X Charitable Trust, which was, did some business incubation for us at the beginning. Um, yeah. And of course, Western Heights High School, because they helped us with box packing mm. for a while. So, um, Janine, I think we've finished our, our thing, yeah. so we, we need to pass on to the next speaker. But um, I have to leave because I'm a yoga teacher, and today's my day to teach, unfortunately. And Janine's going to be here until lunchtime only. So, at 11. yeah, so if you want to ask questions, get hold of her at morning tea, all right? Can we? Just since you have to go, Jenny, do yeah. we have any questions for Jenny before she leaves? Mm. Anybody want to ask anything particularly of Jenny? Otherwise, we've got time available in the session. Yep. Actually, I've got a question. Yeah. I remember it well. <laughs> it's been great to be, um, and have been since sort of the beginning. I was just um, interested in terms of like the framework, like the organisation, and so forth and people in the room being interested in you know, social enterprise, whether that um, you had that opportunity to be go through a mentoring with, with the Rotary X Charitable Trust, if that's something you can consider being of great value to people to take those sort of opportunities. Yeah, well, it was my idea to apply for the funding to do it, and we, we got in. Uh, so this was at the beginning when we were forming our society, and I think it did help us with strategy, um, because often at the start of a, something, you, you have your vision and you have your passion, but how do you get there? You know, What are the steps you need to take? What's worth doing and what's worth leaving out? You know, and they helped a lot with that and with building and we even didn't have a space to meet at that stage we were still looking for a better venue we were in this tiny room at linton park and we needed yeah so they provided a a think space for us where we could all meet and um i think it was valuable yeah it, it created conversation mm. it, it created like this is the day the time you all meet and let's have a conversation Mm. and to have a space to do that. And we could rub shoulders with other people who were starting, They were most of the other people were actually starting businesses, not social enterprises, but um, gave us a lot of perspective on the aspects that are involved with starting a business. And I think we needed to become more, more business-like at that stage. And that's been one of the keys to our success is becoming more business-like, you know. Any other questions for Jenny? All right, well thank you so much ladies for taking some time to come speak with us. We'll let you rush off to yoga. Thank you.